Shalom, Yasharala Shalom, Mr. Brother Ash Ibai, coming back in the spirit, giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And real quick, before I get into this lesson, um, I wanted to speak on something. I had seen a little article from the uh, page End Time Headlines on Instagram. Hey, look, don't say we didn't warn you. I just seen an article saying that the U.S. has uh, launched 13 million doses of a B card for monkeypox. So for those of y'all who was like, oh, 19 is a one-time thing, the lockdown is a one-time thing, look, I can't see the future, but it's gonna be great hell and destruction for all the people on the earth. Before I even get into the main lesson, I wanna bring this scripture out in Matthew, and we gonna go to chapter, I think, 24, yeah. This is Matthew chapter 24. We gonna go to verse seven, it says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And basically, for those of y'all brothers who have been living under a rock, there's going to be many famines. There's droughts and starvation coming. And it's going to be more and more plagues, man. I've been seeing a lot of people in the world, Edomites, Jakes, all type of people scoffing, blaspheming in the spirit, blaspheming the, the people who truly believe, man. Y'all gonna get a harsh and a terrible judgment, man. And don't nobody feel sorry for you if you choose not to return unto your how about Shem Yahweh Shai, man. It's that simple. But anyways, man, I wanna get into this um, lesson. Basically, I'm gonna title this something around the lines of, why call yourself an Israelite if you're not on fire of the Lord? Because as you brothers start to come into the fold, and those of you who genuinely try to give the most high, your mind, your body, your soul, give him everything. You're going to start to notice that the Lord classifies different people. Hey, how you doing, brother? What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Shalom, bro. We need all these brothers out here. Yes, sir, man. What's your name, brother? DeWitt. DeWitt? Oh, that's cool, man. How long you known about the uh, the, the truth? Last, like, three years. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I, I learned about it in 2020, man. Yeah, just eating right. This is a trip, like, once you start really peeping out stuff and looking how everything is. Yeah. It's how you can... Man, once your eyes is open, you get to notice and start seeing a lot of stuff. So yeah, I mean, I was literally about to start this lesson. I don't know if you heard about that monkeypox. Basically, man, they said monkeypox spread in through 10 countries and how the U.S. just, uh, they brought out 13 million doses of a monkeypox uh, vaccine. Wow. So it might be, a hey, man, you know, the scriptures say that there'll be pestilences and plagues and famine. So, you know, at the end of the day, at least you got the understanding and you're doing everything to get on the right, the, the right side of the Heavenly Father, man, because it's going to get more and more crazy stuff coming, yeah, man. Yeah, people think that, like, they talk about we, in, we living in it like, no, we're in it in right now. Days, this yeah. is it right now. It's happening right now. So, oh, sir. Man, everybody just like that. Like, like prophets before us, you feel me? Like they was they was doing bad, then they get woke up, uh -huh. and they get to you know either they they telling the word and they get persecuted. It's the same thing, man. The same thing gonna it's happen the in these thing. days. Man. It's the same thing, yeah, sir. It's the same thing. So it's just like man, it's beautiful, man. I seen the fringes and stuff. I had to just like, hey, hey this I appreciate it, bro, man. Hey, good talking with you, man. Hey, you too. I right, have a good one. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to get the word out, man. All praise to you. How about Shmi Rashad, man? And real stuff, man. If you somebody who teetering on the fence, it's going to be for y'all who are teetering on the fence. Because look, man, the Lord does not deal with maybes. The Lord does not deal with an if or kind of, sort of. The Lord deals with people who is completely devoting. All, and that's why I'm doing this video. I'm doing this lesson, man. So I want to get into Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. It says, and you shall remember all the way which Yahweh thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether you wouldest keep his commandments or no. So when you go back to the time when the Israelites was in the, um, was in the wilderness being led by Moses, right? They were rebellious, they were wicked, they were murmuring, and they didn't truly care and love the Lord the way that he wanted them to. Because the Lord wants you to do something all the way or not do it none at all. Which is why Yahweh Shah said what he said in Revelation chapter 3. But basically, the Lord was testing to see what was in your heart that he had us go through many travails and tribulation. But reading on, continue verse 3. It says, And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which you knowest not. Neither did your fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. 
And at the end of the day, for brothers, when you understand it, you only live by the words of your house. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much bread you got. I don't care how big your family, how wealthy your family name is. If you don't live your life according to the words of the Bible, you're dead. You're spiritually dead. You're a walking body. The vast majority of people on this earth, they're walking dead as if we're playing a, um, a, a zombie game in, in Xbox or PlayStation, bro. But those who are truly quickened through the spirit, the spirit, what it's going to do it is, is it's going to allow you to follow the commandments, the laws and the statutes of the Heavenly Father, man. So if you're not doing that, you have to contemplate whether the Lord is really dealing with you or not. Because one thing that a lot of Jakes love to do is they love to proclaim Israel, 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 Israel. But the word isn't just something that you read and that you talk about, but the word is, word is something that you actually live through your actions, man. Through your actions. When you look at the example of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, every word that he spoke, he lived it through his action. He was a living embodiment of the word. And if Yahweh Shah is truly with you, you're going to take on those same qualities and have that same mindset to do what the words that you're reading are uh, uh, in your daily life. The Bible isn't a, a trend. The Bible isn't a study book. What the Bible is, is a way of living for a group of people. So if you are of that number of people, the only way that the Lord is going to accept you back is by following the word stated. That's why the scripture says that man do not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. You see what I'm saying? Now I want to also get into Matthew chapter 5. And we'll go to verse 13. So this is the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? And this is a parable, meaning you are the salt, you are the seasoning, you are the flavor of the earth. But if the, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Because when you understand in the ancient world what our forefathers would do, what the high priest would do is he would offer a lamb or an animal without blemish. And it was a sweet savor unto the Lord. And what they would often do is that they would season the meat, just like you season the meat during the Passover. The seasoning is symbolic for the things that allow you to be a clean, not, not a clean, but a, a pleasing thing unto the Lord. So what's not pleasing to the Lord and what's pleasing to the Lord? It's simple, bro. What's pleasing to the Lord is when you follow his laws, his statutes and commandments. And what's not pleasing to the Lord is when you disobey. So I'm not going to sit here and say that you're going to change overnight and become a new man overnight. That's not how it works. It's a process. It's a refinement process. You can't turn coal into gold in a half a minute, bro. It takes time. It takes heat. It takes pressure. But again, you got to be very honest with yourself. Ask yourself right now, if you listening to me and you can tell you being a lukewarm nigga, ask yourself, do you really give your all to the Lord? And don't be delusional. Don't try to, don't try to, um, how do I put this the right way? Don't try to self-justify your wicked acts because of what you think is right. But really look into the Bible and read it and see, are you putting your best foot forward? And if you have nothing in which you need to improve or you have no area in which you can say, I got to work on that. But you looking back at yourself and like, okay, I did A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you look at the nigga that you was in your phone a year or two years ago compared to who you are now. If you are the same dude, you are an unsweetened savor to the Lord. You are an abomination to the Lord. And just like when the Lord... When he had certain men uh, burn incense unto him in the wilderness, what happened? Those who the Lord was dealing with, whether it be Moses, Aaron, and those who were in that part of his congregation, the Lord didn't do nothing to them. But remember all the wicked people who were rebelling and saying, why does the Lord choose Moses over you? Remember what happened when they burned incense unto the Lord? The Lord killed and destroyed them and swallowed them up. And that's the time period that we're going into where the Lord has started to show his magnificent power that was repeatedly shown in the Old Testament in these last days, in the end times, man. The spirit of the uh, time of grace is gone, man. It's, it's not gone all the way, but it's getting very, very, very thin. Like if you're on like a, um, a frozen lake, right, and you know how you walk and everything's solid, and you started going to the shallow ends, you start seeing the cracks, you starting to see the water come up. That water is symbolic for the tribulation and that ice is cracking. And we about to get into a mass trial 
especially for all you Israelites, man. If y'all don't really want to be in this thing, then go into the world, man. We don't want lukewarm dudes. I don't want no lukewarm dude around me because the only thing that your spirit of lukewarmness is going to do is cause me to be more fleshly, cause me to be more carnal, and allow the Lord to associate me with you. Because Amos 3 and 3, can two be together lest they be agreed? So if I'm trying to put my best foot forward, <clears throat> And you dilly-dallying in a word, you hot one day, cold one day, you say you worship the Lord, but then you doing something completely against his word the next, I don't want to be around you. And no true man of the Lord, no true woman of the Lord wants to be around somebody who's a double-minded man. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man will be truthful and say he wants to serve the Lord, will be truthful and say that he's a part of the truth. But then the next day, he going back into the Christian doctrine. He going back into the world doctrine, man. You're conflicted. You like a woman with two lovers and you can't pick what you want. You're mentally unstable. And the Lord is not dealing with anybody who's on an unstable foundation because your mind has to be rock solid. The scriptures say that the most high is not a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And a sound mind is something that can't be shaken. A sound mind is something that can't go to and fro like the wind, like a reed shaking in the wind, right? You got to be firm. You got to be solid. You got to be rock solid, man. So getting into this, it's very simple. And a lot of times I feel like I repeat myself because when you when you talk to Jake, when you talk to a so-called black man, man, when you talk to a, a so-called Latino man, y'all be so hard-headed, man. You be so hard-headed because if you watch any videos of mine or another brother or anybody who's trying their best to, you know, feed the sheep, but we say the same thing every every damn near every uh video man there's nothing new under the sun and the reason why the lord repeats himself constantly 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 is to get it to y'all through y'all thick ass skulls because again you are stiff neck and you are rebellious by nature and if you understand that you're rebellious by nature you got to constantly be evaluating whether or not you're truly in the faith because again your flesh you yourself and you and your flesh are your worst nightmare if you're not careful, what your mind is going to start to do is going to be justified through your flesh. And your flesh is going to always try to get you to go back into being of the world, to always satisfy yourself, to always go back into that lean, going back into that drink, going back into that weed smoke, going back into popping every strange woman, going back into dishonoring the Sabbath, going back into being a carnal, worldly ass nigga, man. Now I want to read John chapter 14, verse 15. It said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Very plain, very simple. When you read through the first four or five books, but specifically Exodus through Deuteronomy, the Lord is outlining right in front of you what he wants you to do and what he doesn't want you to do. And one thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna have to start making some very, very hard choices. And they're not really hard when you understand and you evaluate and you ask yourself, what's more important, me being a dude in the world or me actually following the Lord in fullness and sincerity. When you truly love the Lord and you had the option to either honor the Sabbath or go out and party and buy and do things to honor and please your flesh, it's very, very easy for you to make that decision. But when you don't really love the Lord, you're gonna make all type of excuses. When the Bible says to abstain from wicked and evil appearances, when the Bible says to abstain from things of the world, when the Bible says that you have to give up father, mother, brother, sister, daughter and all these things to, in order to serve Yahweh Shai, in order to follow Yahweh Shai. When you go into these different conflicts of interest, you're going to have to make a very simple and a very plain decision, right? If you are really repentant, if you really, really want to serve the Lord in fullness and sincerity, it's not going to be a question. Now you might question it, you might wonder, damn, do I really got to do that? But then when you see the plagues coming, when again, brother's talking about the drought coming, the famine coming, the persecution coming, the concentration camps coming, the fight, and worst of all, all those things is the fire that's gonna come upon the wicked. You have what? You have a fear of the Lord. If you don't have a true fear of the Lord, you're not gonna walk into his law, statutes, and commandments. If you see yourself as a man or as a woman, self-justifying and you find yourself constantly breaking constantly in pork constantly in shellfish lying manipulating being a conniver and you've been and you've been reading the truth and you've been watching videos for how, who knows how long three months six months a year two years it means you don't really have the fear of the lord and that's the worst place that you can be in if you don't truly fear your how about shimmy out shy yet you know about the terrible powers that you how about shimmy out shy you're gonna get the worst judgment of all bro you're gonna get the worst judgment of all 
But if you hear that and you don't give a damn, then hey, bro, keep doing what you're doing, bro. Again, this video not for you. But to those brothers who are really sincere and really want to see themselves not get destroyed and killed with the time that we about to go into, then what you're going to do is you're going to correct your ways, bro. The scripture in Sirach says, uh, rep uh, what does it say? Uh, repent and offend less. Offend less. Offend less. Not repent and do the same thing two times worse, bro. Come on, man. It's very, very simple. And it's going to be a very simple lesson because this isn't a hard concept to grasp. The only reason why it's hard is because you just quite frankly don't want to follow the Lord. Simple. Let's go to the book of 1 John. And we're going to go to um, chapter 5. This is the book of John, chapter 5, verse 3. It says, for this is the love of Yahweh. Now, what is John saying? He said, this is how you love the Lord that you keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So what's packed into that statement? If you love the Lord, you'll follow his law, statutes and commandments. Why? Because when you read the Bible, you see the crazy judgment that the Lord gave our people. He had women eating their own babies. He had women sacrificing their babies unto Baal. He had men killing the wives, wives killing the women. He had the same people who run this society, the Edomites, coming and putting you in hardcore subjection. Uh, some people were getting beheaded. Some people were becoming eunuchs. They would cut off your your uh, your male member, right? I can go on and on and on and on and on, but I'm not going to. You look back in history and understand that there's no new thing under the sun. And when you understand Zechariah, the 13th chapter in the 8th verse, it says that two parts of all Israelites will die. So if you are in the fold and you understand that the Lord is giving you an opportunity, you have to understand that that's very select, that's very limited. It's not that all Israel will be saved. It's that one third will be refined and shaped, meaning that for you to be a truly of the one third, you will be refined, you will be cleansed, you will be purified. Through what? Through the word, through the trial, through the tribulation. And Lord willing, you will be saved. That's just a prerequisite. That's a requirement, a prerequisite to get in the kingdom. A prerequisite, right? But the two thirds will be cut off and killed and destroyed. And we all understand the reason why, because they will be wicked. They won't turn back unto the Lord. Now getting into the point, it says his commandments aren't grievous. And what that means is that they're not a grieve unto you. They're not, oh, why do I got to do that? If you asking yourself and you reading the commandments like, oh, why do I got to do that? Why do I got to not charge my brother usury? Why do I got to help my brother out? Why do I got to give alms? Why do I have to be a good person? It's because you are of your father, the devil. You are born to be a wicked Israelite. And whatever spirit is placed inside of you, that's just what the heavenly father giving you. The heavenly father want to raise you up so he can kill and destroy you, bro. The Lord is good and he's evil. He's not all good. He's not, he, he's great. He's, he's all righteousness. But what I mean is that he shows his power through good but he also can create evil to punish the wicked. And let me see if I can find this. There's a scripture in Proverbs. I'm not going to look it up, but it basically says the Lord builds up the wicked to smite and kill it and destroy it. It's in Proverbs, I think around the 17th chapter. So again, when it comes to following the law, statutes and commandments, the Lord makes it very, very simple. It's not going to be like a puzzle game or you like trying to study to become an engineer and you got to figure out how to No, bro. It's very plain and very simple. And the reason why it's very plain and it's very simple is when you place the Lord above everything and you place serving the Lord above everything, whatever you have to do to serve the Lord, you're going to do it. Because if you are truly of the elect, you will go through all kinds of suffering. You have to you have to look at suffering. You have to look at grief. You have to look at loss of friendships and loss of women and loss of your family as a beautiful thing. Let me uh, actually go back. I'm going to go back into the book of Acts. So we're going to go to the book of Acts, chapter uh, 5. And we'll turn the page. We're going to go to verse 39. I'll read verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and leave them alone. For it is this counsel or this work be of men. It will come to nigh. But if it be of Yahweh, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily you be found even to fight against Yahweh. And I want to read verse 40. It says, And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yahweh Shai and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer, suffer shame for his name. So for you to be able to serve the Lord, you got to suffer shame and reproach. And why will people shame you? Because you're going to be different. You're not a regular nigga in the world, bro. 
You know when the Sabbath is. You know how to keep the Sabbath. You know how to serve the Lord. You know how to keep the commandments. And you know who your enemy is in this society. A lot of people don't like to come against Big Daddy Esau Edom. A lot of people don't like to come against Big Daddy Caucasian Jew, Caucasian white man, because you're afraid. You're afraid more of the wicked father than you are afraid of the heavenly father. So when it comes down to it, if you are truly of the elect, if you are the hopeful elect, let me say that because we don't know if we're of the elect, but if you feel like you're on the right path, it's not going to be a second thought, man. It's not going to be a second thought. Like if somebody came to you and said, hey, look, I'll give you a million dollars if you honor the Sabbath. You would do that shit in a second. But you got dudes who want to self-justify why they can't keep the Sabbath so they can make 10, 15, 20 dollars. Look at your mindset, bro. Remember, the scriptures say to buy the truth and sell it not. And a lot of brothers like to use that in regards to merchandise. But what it's really talking about is when you get the heavenly gift of understanding who you are and understanding the relationship that you have with the heavenly father and what he requires of you, you would never, ever want to trade it. And you got to treat it as such, man. A lot of y'all wouldn't even be willing to walk a mile for the Lord. A lot of y'all wouldn't even be willing to let go of your girl for the Lord. And the vast majority of y'all would not be willing to give up money for the, the, the most high Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. When you understand that, that scripture in uh, 1 Peter where it says, um, you know, use the world, not abuse it. What it's talking about is to use and do certain things in the world, but not abuse it to the point where you're going against your heavenly father. But to be quite honest with you, a lot of y'all just ain't built like that. You know, when I was in the world and I used to do things like track and I used to think like sports, the one thing I, I think that I grew up with is that mindset of Kobe, to be obsessed, the mindset of Jordan, to be obsessed because I wanted to be a great thing, right? But when you come into the truth and when you actually get an understanding of the Lord, you got to have that same mindset times 10 into serving the Lord, bro. You got to be obsessed with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You got to have so much love for the Lord that you're willing to give up everything. And if you're not willing to give up everything for the Lord, because you have to understand this life that we're living in in this society right now is a precursor for how bad things are coming. So if you can't give up the, give up working on the Sabbath, if you can't give up doing drugs and doing things like that, you're not going to make it in that time where you have to give up everything. Your car, your house, your friendships, your freedom. Some of y'all might have to give up your member. Who knows? You might be in the concentration camps. They might be cutting off Mel Jake's, uh, you know, phalluses, bruh. If you can't do something simple as following the law, statutes, and commandments, especially the ones that you can keep, then how the hell are you going to make it through the Jacob's trouble? You're not going to make it, man. And you're deluding yourself. And honestly, the Lord is putting a spirit of delusion to allow you to be destroyed because for whatever reason, he was telling you, he was telling you, he was telling you, but you didn't want to hear it. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. And we'll go to chapter 66. So this is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 66, verse 4, it says, I will also choose their delusion. It will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes. So this isn't just talking about somebody who never got the understanding that they were Israelite or that they automatically rejected it, but it's also talking about the wicked Israelites of the circumcision, meaning you understood and you knew you were Israelite, but you still chose to do, do which the Lord delighted not. And at the end of the day, we're not perfect. I've gone off in the law from time to time. Other brothers have. And that's why you're given grace. But the scripture says that if you sin willfully, there is no remission of sin. There is no sacrifice for sin. So if you choose to blatantly go off and do things that are a transgression of the law and think, oh, well, I got the blood of Yahweh Shah, so I'm going to be good. You're just like a Christian. And the Lord ain't dealing with a Christian. The spirit cannot enter into a malicious soul. So a malicious soul is a soul that likes to go and do wickedness and think that the Lord is going to come back and, and help them no matter what. That's how we were in the ancient world, playboy. That's how we were in the Babylonian captivity, playboy. The Assyrian captivity, playboy. The Greece, the Greco-Roman captivity, playboy. And in this time, it's the same thing. So if you had that mindset, bro, hey, man, look, man, you got to change your ways because you are in the worst possible position a lukewarm nigga is the worst possible position you could be in and speaking of that let's just get into that let's get into that let's get into that so i want to get into revelation we'll go to chapter three famous verses in 15 salaki give me a second brothers so this is revelation chapter three we're gonna go to verse 15 it says i know your works what does that mean the Lord knows everything that you're doing, bro. All the times you try to hide it on Instagram, all the times you try to delete your text messages, all the times you try to smoke weed to get that to get that thought out of your head. You thought you thought the weed was gonna kill your brain cells to kill your memory so you can self-justify your wickedness, right? 
So what is Yahweh Shah saying? He says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. Meaning, I know you, man. I see you every day. I see one day you in the world, one day you hot for me. I see one day you trying your best and the next day you not. He's telling you, I know that you're a double-minded man. I know that you're a man trying to serve, you're a man trying to serve two masters. It says, I would that you were hot or cold. Yeah, how was I saying? I would have had more respect if you just tell me you, you want to be of the world. I would have had more respect for you if you tell him you are the world than if you trying to do this back and forth stuff. Or you going to be in the truth. What is he saying? He's saying chocolate, vanilla, choose. He's saying righteousness or wickedness, choose. He's not saying a little bit of righteousness on the left and a little bit of wickedness on the right. Nah, man. The Lord wants people who are pure. And if you are the elect, he's going to make you 100% pure. But you have to have pure intentions. You have to have a pure mind for the Lord to truly be dealing with you, man. Because he can read your mind. You may not sit here and tell me these things or tell your brother in the truth these things or your sister in the truth these things. But the Lord going to reveal all. If the Lord is dealing with a man of the Lord, he going to show you your wickedness. You're going to blurt it out. You're not even going to understand. But the man of the Lord, the woman of the Lord going to sit back like, oh, did he really say that? But then I'm looking at their page and they ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? You can't outsmart, outsmart the heavenly father. You can't try to outsmart those who he's dealing with. Because then basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to outsmart the heavenly father. And the Lord not dealing with you, man. But continuing on. Verse 16, it says, So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Meaning he's going to reject you, bro. He's going to reject you, man. He don't want no uh, half on, half off Israelite. An uh, in-season uh, half of the year I'm an Israelite Half the other season I'm a worldly dude I'm going to deactivate my IG account right? Continue on verse 17 it says Because you say I am rich and increased with goods And have need of nothing And know it's not that you are wretched and miserable And poor and blind and naked I counsel thee to buy of me gold Tried in the fire That you may be as rich And this is such a powerful scripture Yahweh Shai saying You thought that you were still so good in the world That you didn't really need me like that you thought that you were still, you had some things in the world that you was cool, that you didn't really need to come into the truth like that. That's why the scriptures say the meek shall inherit the earth. Because when you understand that you're meek, that you're lowly, and that anything, nothing in the world can truly validate and satisfy you, you're going to, by proxy, naturally cling unto your how about Shemiah was shy, right? It says, he, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. So the only way you're a gold, because the scripture in Isaiah 13 and 12 says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, than the than the uh, the wedges of Ophir, right? The only way you could truly be a gold tried in the fire is through the tribulation of having to serve the Lord with all your heart. If you're not going through trials and tribulations and suffering from you following the word, you're not really in this thing like that, man. You can't even say that you're in the truth. You know of the truth, you are exposed to the truth, but to be in the truth means that you sitting all the way in a fiery fiery furnace of affliction. Let me see if I can find that in 1 Peter. Well, actually, it's 2 Peter. It's uh, 2 Peter. Salaki, give me a second, brothers. Let me see if I can find it. Damn, let me see if I can find it. There it is right here. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice. But rejoice. And as much as you are partakers of Hamashiach's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you re be reproached for the name of Hamashiach, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On the part, on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. And I'm gonna skip down to verse 18. It says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Yahweh commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing and unto a faithful creator. So you have to understand one of the key aspects of being in this truth, being a man or woman of the Lord, is that suffering, man. That suffering to trying your best to, to fight your flesh, man. A lot of y'all is weak, man. 
A lot of y'all don't like to put your all into things. A lot of y'all don't like to go the extra mile for the Lord, man. You want to do a little bit underneath and pray that the Lord give you, give you, give you grace and mercy. You're supposed to try your best to strive for perfection and through your, your falling short, your Hawashai sacrifice is what deems you worthy. But you can't be a dude who's doing 25% and think that the Lord gonna bring you to 100, man. Come on, bro. And you know in your mind whether or not you truly serving the Lord with in fullness and sincerity with all your heart or not, man. It's very plain through the spirit. You can see through the spirit who actually cares about the Lord with all their heart and might and who's just pump faking, bro. You, you ain't really committing to shoot all the way, man. But get back into a uh, uh, revelation. Let's get back into that. So back into the book of Revelation, chapter three. I'm gonna go back down to verse 18. It says, I console thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich in white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So Yahweh Shai is saying, as many as I love, I rebuke. And that's another thing with a lot of y'all lukewarm brothers. You don't like rebuke, you don't like reproof. And don't get it twisted. Sometimes rebuke can be bitter. You getting put on blast. You being told that something about you is wrong. You, the great Hebrew Israelite man and woman that you are. But that's what you have to understand is that you are just a fleshly creature. You are imperfect and you are wicked by nature. Your mind is wicked by nature. So you have to have people around you willing to rebuke you, willing to correct you, willing to tell you to err in your ways. Because if you are above and you are on pride, you're gonna fall into destruction. And I'm going to continue on. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So for you to understand that if the if Yahweh Shah is dealing with you, there has to be some type of reproach. There has to be some type of rebuke. If the, when you look at what Yahweh Shah did when he was on the scenes, what he oftentimes did, he always rebuked. Whether it was his apostles, whether it was, you know, Particularly the disciples who became the apostles. What did he say unto his? What did he say unto, unto the to Peter, who will become the cornerstone of his church? He said, Re, um, "Get off from me, Satan!" He called Peter his adversary in that moment and rebuked him. Remember when the disciples, when he said, "Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees," and they said, "How, Lord, we have uh, did we not bring enough bread?" He said, oh, you a little faith. He was constantly rebuking them. Oh, you a little faith. But it wasn't because he was trying to criticize them and make them feel like shit. No, the reason why he did it is because he loved them. A true brother of the Lord loves you, man. A lot of y'all brothers don't even understand that, man. For a brother to go out, for a brother to go out of his way, because when you understand how rebuke works, it don't feel good. And a lot of times you may feel like anxious that the person, whenever you tell them the rebuke, they're going to go off on you. They're going to get angry. They're going to get mad. They're not going to want to be around you. But you still love them enough to the point where you're willing to rebuke them for their wickedness that they're doing. That's true love. And you got to look at it like that. Otherwise, you're going to get the love of this world. That whatever you do is perfectly fine until that one day when the Lord judges you and kills you and destroys you. This is Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4, or verse 5, Salakia. It says, open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. What does that mean? That when somebody openly rebukes you and has the boss to tell you the wickedness of your ways, that is better than somebody secretly saying they love you when behind the scenes they letting you do all type of wicked imaginations in your mind. Verse 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend. If a friend wounds you and beats you up through the word, that means that he's your friend. But a devil is somebody who kisses you and they're deceitful, like the serpent, like the so-called white man. He loves to tell you how great you are when at the same time he about to stab you in your back. When at the same time he giving you a, a jab that has all type of wicked imaginations. At the same time he's telling you, oh, I love you, I love you. When he's destroying your field crops, he's adding GMO foods. He's allowing your woman to have the most abortions out of every other woman, woman and calling her a god and saying she could do whatever she want. What he's really doing is he's destroying your, your, your community. He's destroying your ethnic, your, he's destroying your essence as a man, right? But when you come down to it, he's kissing you and saying, oh, I love you, I love you. Whereas a real brother, a real brother who's really with you is going to tell you, bro, you're going all the way off, bro. And you got to stop that shit, man. Otherwise, the Lord is not going to be with you because a real brother has a fear of the Lord. 
And the scriptures say the two great commandments is that you shall love the most high with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And the second commandment is that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So if you looked at yourself in the mirror and you read the Bible and you saw how you was going off constantly, 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 and you understand the judgment of somebody who's going off constantly, 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 would you as a man, if you could truly say you love yourself, wouldn't you try to correct yourself? If you knew you had a heart attack, if you knew you were gonna have a stroke because you were eating foods that was abominable, would you not stop yourself from doing that? So how much more if you love your neighbor? Wouldn't you tell your neighbor, hey bro, you gotta get off the couch, bro. Hey bro, you a little bit too fat, bro, you gotta work out. Hey bro, the woman that you think you love, she really just trying to take these things from you. I'm trying to help you out. That's true brotherly love. Not the dude who said, oh bro, you got a bad chick. Or you see you on the couch like, oh bro, you look great, bro. You know, you got a beer belly, you got a pot belly, but you still look great, bro. How can you call yourself a brother when you're not even rebuking your brother, man? And the reason why a lot of y'all jakes is so rebellious is because you don't want to hear it, bro. Y'all stiff neck. You at the bottom of society and dudes try to come and help you, but you don't want to hear it because you want to just continue to be a nigga. That's why the, the Most High said, my people are a stiff neck people. My people have rejected knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject thee. That's why y'all not holy no more. That's why you call black. That's why you being labeled as death. When the Most High gave you the breath of life, he gave you the law, statutes, and commandments to stand by and said, if you follow my law, statutes, and commandments, you will be blessed above the earth. Why you think y'all been at the bottom for so long, bro? Because y'all don't like to listen. But continuing on, this is Proverbs 13 and 13, right? It says, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. So if you hate the if you hate the word of Yahweh, you're gonna be destroyed. It's plain, bro. It's plain. If you don't understand that you're an Israelite and understand that with coming with an Israelite, you have to live your life a certain way, the Lord gonna kill you. Point blank, period, bro. Ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. It says, but he that feareth the commandments shall be rewarded. So if you fear the commandments, what does that mean? You fear Yahweh, which means you love Yahweh. So if that's the case, then the Lord is gonna reward you. Also, getting into the book of Proverbs, let's go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So the fear of the Lord is when you understand and you understand the, the great power of the Lord and how he's bringing death and destruction on his place, you will fear him so you will search for knowledge. And the beginning of knowledge is understanding what he deems right of you and what he deems wrong of you. Not the, not the things that you think are right in your own eyes. Because let me read this Jeremiah. I'm going to go to Jeremiah real quick. This is Jeremiah chapter 17, and we'll go down to verse 9 off the top of my head. It says the heart, and basically the heart is synonymous for your mind. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, Yahweh, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So the Lord is telling you that your mind is wicked above all things. So if you're not being reformed and reproved and corrected in your mind, the Lord is going to give you according to your ways. If you choose to continue to worship false gods like uh, Helios Christos, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, if you continue to worship after Allah, you continue to follow Buddha, you continue to look into all these Egyptian gods, when the Lord said you will serve no other gods but the God of Israel, then what's going to happen is you're going to get the same judgment as the ancient forefathers. If you continue to offer, offer your baby as a sacrifice to Molech through abortion, then the Lord is going to give you, I did a lesson on this, man. It's simple. It's very simple. The Lord is very simple with what he wants. Yahweh Shah is very simple. That's why the scripture says, through the simplicity in Hamashiach. Very, very simple. It's not rocket science, bro. Because the Lord knows that most Jakes ain't really book smart like that when it comes to like, you know, different things like that. But we are gifted and we are chosen. And spiritually, we have an inclination to follow the Lord. You know what's really right. But if you choose not to follow it, then hey, man, you just openly rebellious. And we already know what's going to happen to people who are openly rebellious. And also, I want to get this in the book of Baruch. Because once you understand that you are Israelite, you as a Negro, a so-called Negro man, when you understand you are Israelite, right, you have to be able to understand the history of why you were placed at the bottom, why you were in spiritual slavery, why you're in this position. Let's get this. This is Baruch chapter 4, verse 28. It says, for it was your mind to go astray from the Lord. So being returned, seek him 10 times more. So in your mind, because I just read in Jeremiah that your mind is wicked above all, because your mind is constantly going astray, in order for you to stop yourself from going off constantly, you have to seek the Lord 10 times more. Meaning you have to seek the Lord with all your might and with all your heart and truly get 
truly be repentant and be reformed because repenting is not just words but it's actually actions any brother can say i repent the christians say it every sunday and then what happened on monday they commit adultery they eat pork <laughs> you know what i'm saying they're not honoring the sabbath remember let me let me i'm getting ahead of myself but it is what it is remember what the lord said we're gonna go to first samuel chapter 2 verse 3 right this is the book of first samuel chapter 2 verse 3 it says talk no more exceeding proudly because jake's love to talk jake's love to raise hell and say oh i love the lord i love jesus but read this it says let not arrogancy come out of your mouth for the lord is a god of knowledge and by him actions are weighed so you can sit here and talk all this big stuff saying you love the lord but what did yahweh shai say if you love me keep my commandments bro and if you're not doing that then you don't really love the lord and I, it, it's unfortunate if you get offended, if you get angry, hey, bro, it is what it is. A true man of the Lord is not afraid to offend because at the end of the day, sometimes you got to do that to cut somebody in the heart, man. These Christian pastors just tell you, come to the church, give your tithes, and the Lord loves you. That's not how the Lord works, man. That's not, the Lord is not a simp. You can't just sit here and say you love the Lord and constantly cheat on him, committing all type of fornication and wickedness and think that he's going to be there for you. And that's why this land is getting ready to be judged. You got another pestilence coming on when y'all just got out of quote unquote lockdown what's gonna happen are y'all gonna take that jab for monkey pox all right what are you gonna happen when, when the famine comes upon you at the end of the at the end of the year what's gonna happen bro you got people who running out of baby formula what's gonna happen when you f can't feed your little baby what are you gonna do what are you gonna do when the dollar collapses what are you gonna do when the, they're telling telling you how the economy is going into recession they're lying to you it's actually going into a depression there's supposed to be in a, rec a recession the last four or five years but all that free money that they gave you is just fattening you up for the slaughter. So if you understand that the reaper is coming and taking away all the wicked people of, of the nation of Israel first, then what do you need to do? What would a smart man do? A smart man would try his best to serve Yahweh. Let's go to the book of Amos chapter 9. And you can't escape judgment. A lot of y'all like to live in your delusions that the Lord is going to spare you. What did the Lord say? Amos 9 and 9. For lo, I will command, I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. So he's going to sift, he's going to judge the Israelites first before any other nation. It says, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. What does he mean by that? He means that the judgment is not going to skip over anybody. Verse 10, it says, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. And who is the sword? It's the people who run this society, the Caucasian Jews and all the wickedness that they're coming up with and all the, uh, the evil machinations that they're coming up with. So if you are a sinner, the Lord is going to allow you to be killed by his sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. And that's what a lot of Christians have. They say, oh, my God would never do that. My God would never do that to his own people. What do the scriptures say, man? That's why you got to read the Bible for yourself and not listen to another man who just wants your money and wants your tithes every weekend, bro. And I want to go to the book of uh, Matthew. I'll go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 7. So this is the book of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. It states, it says, For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of Yahweh and the power of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew again unto repentance, seeing they crucify themselves, the sons of Yahweh afresh and put the Lord to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh and rain that cometh off upon it and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receive the blessings from the Lord. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is near unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. And the reason why I'm doing it is, again, for you lukewarm brothers. You got the understanding. You got the truth. But why aren't you listening? Why aren't you following it? You are becoming corrupted. You are becoming thorns that are being sowed amongst the seed. And the Lord is going to allow those thorns to be burned up and killed and destroyed. If you're not bringing fruit, if you're not bringing fruits of the spirit by actually living this truth in fullness and sincerity, the Lord is going to reject you, man. Um... And getting back into what I was saying, Salak you brothers. I want to go to Matthew chapter 7. So this is Matthew chapter 7. I'll read verse 13. It says, Enter you at the straight gate, for wide is the gate that leadeth, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. 
and many be, many there be which go in thereafter. So if you if you following with society, if you following with your friends and your family, they're being led to destruction. The vast majority of people are being led to destruction. Verse 14, it says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. And when you look at a man when he's teetering, like let's say he's doing a tightrope, right? Or let's say you look at an illustration of a man who's, you know, on the left, he got danger and destruction. On the right, he got danger and destruction. Why is he, why is it always him by himself? It's symbolic. Because if you truly serve the Lord, you are more often than not going to be by yourself. And you have to be okay with that, man. A lot of y'all, what y'all don't like to do is make tough decisions. You know a lot of people has gone off. You know that the Lord has given a lot of people a reprobate mind and a reprobate spirit. But you're too afraid to lose the people of the world for the Savior. Let's get this in the book of Matthew. We're going to go to chapter 10. And I think it's, uh, it's like, give me a second. Verse 37. It says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And why did he start with your father and your mother? Because those are the people who raised you up. Those are the people who gave you the closest bond. The, how you doing, brother? Those are the people who gave you the bond of life, the people that you're attached to. He said, if you're not willing to lose them, you're not worthy of me. Why did he start it off like that? Because if you are willing to lose your mother and your father for the Lord, that means you're willing to cut off anybody. That's why when you go down and you read it, right? It says, and he that loveth his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy. He that find his life shall lose it. And he that lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. Why do you think brothers say you may lose your life? Not literally getting killed. You're going to lose the life that you used to live. When you're truly born again, that means you become a whole new person. The people in your past, they only knew you as that wicked nigga. The people that I knew... They used to only see me as a person who liked to turn up and go crazy and go buck wild and do all these drugs and talk shit and go wild on people. So when I changed, they separated themselves from me. But it wasn't really them separating themselves. It was the Lord separating them from me. Because you have to understand, Jeremiah 1 and 5, I had known thee before you were formed in the belly of your mother's womb. When you were in your mother's womb, I sanctified you. It's predestination. Whoever is the Lord's chosen, he knew from the beginning of the earth. So you have to understand when you're going on this path, you have to see it as your destiny. You have to see it as this is why you're on the earth. Many people were born to be an athlete. Many people were born to be a rapper. And the vast majority of those rappers and athletes, they sold out for it. But if you are meant to be of the elect, you understand that once you get the truth, this was for you. So anything, anything that tries to come above that, you're going to have to either cut it off or put it in its proper place, man. And it's hard. I understand that a lot of y'all don't like to hear that. But, bro, that's just the honest truth, man. This truth is very bitter. It's a bitter book, man. It's like eating a bitter herbs. It tastes like shit when you first taste it, but once you digest it and you swallow it, it's good for you. When you eat your vegetables as a kid, you hated it. You wanted to eat the sugar. The sugar tasted good at the beginning, but it led you to what? Diabetes, high blood pressure, and eventually death. When you ate vegetables, it tasted horrible at the beginning, but you ended up being strong. You ended up being in shape. It's the same thing with the word, man. It's the same thing with the word. It's a lot. The, you got to remember, Yahweh Shai is uh, the living water. So when you drink water, it's very plain, but it's the best for you. Compared to when you're drinking soda, you getting liquor. You feel great at the beginning, but you always end up feeling like shit. And, it, and it's synonymous to the sugar. It's synonymous to the, to, the, um, to the soda and to the liquor. That's just the wickedness of this world. When you first come into the truth, it's going to be very hard for you. But over time, it's going to be the best thing for you. Compared to when you're living in iniquity for a season, you're going to get an everlasting punishment, man. And I want to see if I can end this real quick, you know. But, hey, brothers out of love, man. I don't, I don't hate none of my brothers, but I got to rebuke y'all, man, because, man, times is getting tough, bro. Is it, how, how you still not serving the Lord and gas about to be $5 a gallon? Talking about it's going to be 6 $7. How you going to live? The vast majority of y'all living off a of minimum wage. How you going to get saved? The only person who's going to save you is the Lord, man. But you got to have faith. A lot of y'all don't got faith, man. A lot of y'all don't have faith that when you have nothing, the Lord is going to give you everything. You just like our forefathers of old. The Lord put a mighty work, the, divided the Red Sea, led you through and smited your enemies. And when you got into the wilderness, you wanted to create a golden calf because you had no faith, man. And the same thing going on today. That's why the Lord said when the Son of Man returned to the earth, will he find faith on it? Because y'all losing faith and you are the children of faith, man. If you are the seed of Israel, you are the children of faith, bro. But you got to believe it, man. And I can't keep telling you the same thing over and over again, bro. Eventually, you're going to have to learn the hard way. And it's better for you to learn 
from people's mistakes in the past and avoid it, then you would have to be that example. Because all those wicked people who would be destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were examples of the Lord's wrath. And the same thing coming on when the earth is flooded with fire. Those people are going to be examples of what happens when you don't follow the Lord. Now getting into James chapter 1 verse 22. Because I'm going to make it simple for y'all brothers, man. This is the book of James chapter 1. And we'll go to verse 22. It says, but be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and doer or not, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. So you got to be a doer, bro, not a talker, not a hearer only. Also, I want to get into uh, Proverbs 21 and 2 to understand the wickedness of your own mind and why you got to constantly fight against your own mind. This is Proverbs 21 and 12. Uh, Salaki, not 21 and 12. 21 and 2. It says, let me see. Every man, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the heart. Meaning what? Your way might be right in your own eyes, but the Lord is weighing the nature of your mind, whether you have a wicked, malicious mind or a pure and meek mind, right? Continuing on, verse 3, it says, To do justice is ju and judgment is more acceptable to your how than sacrifice. So to be righteous and to have righteous judgment is more honorable to the Lord than you trying to constantly repent and pray for mercy because you willingly going off and committing sin, man. And I want to end it at Romans chapter 2. This is going to be the last verse. And Lord willing, you brothers were edified by this lesson. So this is the book of Romans. We're going to go to chapter 2. And we'll go to verse uh, 6. It says, Who will render to every man according to his deed? To them who by patience, by patient cont continuance and well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So the Lord is saying, if you are patiently waiting, you are constantly being a good man, a good woman, and doing the things that the Lord requires of you, you will get immortality and eternal life. But verse 8, But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that do evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. And the Jews are the land of Judea, those who are of the circumcision, and the Gentiles is the land of the northern kingdom, the lost ten tribes who were banished from the land of Israel for their wickedness, right? Verse 10, it says, But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with Yahweh. For as many have sinned without law, shall also, shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law, shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are justified before Yahweh, but the doers of the law shall be, shall be justified. So a doer of the law, a man who actually first and foremost believes in Yahweh Shah Mashiach fully, but also follows the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments to the best of his ability. Again, you're not perfect. Again, you can't keep every law perfectly, but you know in your right mind what you can and what you can't do. So if you truly love the Lord like you say you do, you're going to do what he said. If you love me, keep my commandments. So with that being said, I give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. At the water for you brothers tuning in and understand that the world is going to get in a much, much darker and worse place. And judgment is coming upon y'all. So y'all brothers got to hearken on, bro, because it ain't too much time left. So with that being said, it's the brother Ash Ibai signing out.